Hey everybody, how's it going? Just adjusting my music here. Hopefully my audio levels are good. I think a couple things got changed from last time, but um, ready to start again tonight. What's everybody, what's everybody up to? I see a couple, a couple people here that are regulars here. MP Lafee, William of the Rune Keepers, Filamentus, uh, Red Bar. Hey everybody, how's it going? Mm. Thank you to everybody who dropped by Ashley's stream. Um, last night I was streaming with my friend Ashley over on her channel, and one of the things we made, I can show it off a little bit more clearly now that I'm back, um, but this is the like tab for the end of her belt right here, um, or at least this is half of it. We 3D modeled and printed this last night, and then um, we 3D modeled a couple other things, but uh, they were printing and I kind of left them over at her place, so I'm gonna have to pick them up later. But I have several things now that have been 3D modeled and printed, and I'm really excited to get all of that and put it together. So that's uh, that's what we did last night. Oops, this is something that shouldn't be on my stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is my my reference image that I've had up. We're working on the bag tonight, or at least I'm gonna make. Thanks, Artful Jackalope. I've still got stuff really loud for me. Resubscribe for four months. Thank you so much. Saying yes, I can't stay long. Glad I got to catch even a little bit of the stream. I'm glad you got to catch it too. So thanks for coming by. Um, angry moose on the loose. Yes, this is my natural curliness. Well, I like I use a hair straightener to kind of make a few more defined curls in the front, but there's no product in my hair, and I don't do all of it. It's just it's just like this when it dries. Uh, but anyway. Tonight I'm working on Zelda's bag and um, kind of figuring out my shape and doing a mock-up for this. And as I posted on Twitter, uh, I have a different reference image that shows it a little bit more clearly. And it's actually the same bag that she wears with her like normal default outfit. So, oh, I wonder if I can just put that on here. Hmm. I don't want to mess around with stuff for too long. I want to get started, but. I could probably import a GIF of Zelda's butt, right? I mean, I feel like most people wouldn't complain about that. So give me just a second. Oh no, it's not gonna let me... Nah, it's not gonna let me download it from Twitter, which is a shame. Anyway, I don't wanna spend too long on that. I am gonna go ahead and get started. I've basically planned out like the dimensions of what I want the bag to be, and I have a couple of pieces of fabric cut. Oops my own stream up on my phone. All right, and so I'm gonna slide my, my camera around here for my table and just hang out with you here. Oh, and you can switch. That's better. Now I'm slightly bigger. Hey guys, how's it going? Everyone is happy about the butt. I, yeah, I feel like the butt um, was a popular moment in the game or like in that cutscene. everyone was like, <gasps> Zelda's butt. Um, so I was a little disappointed that it was like halfway cut off in the gift that I found, but you know what? It, it does its job of being a reference for me, luckily. You can see my little keyboard up here too. Cool. Well, so I just have a couple of things planned for this. I have the dimensions that I kind of just jotted down as um, some notes for um, how I'm going to start making my mock-up. And then I actually have a sewing camera set up for today, so you guys can see me actually sew something, I think. Oh, thank you, Jesse Lynn. <laughs> um, but yes, I have the dimensions planned out, and this is a long strip of fabric that I'm gonna use um, as my base. So I'm just gonna start going. Now, I'm pretty sure that my base piece needs to have the same dimensions as this, like, quilter square, or not a square, but it's like a rectangle. So quilter's ruler is what it is. Um, but I'm just going to start by cutting my fabric. I've got a cutting mat down here on the table, and you guys can see my Darth Vader shirt. It's definitely a pajama party again today. And I'm just going to use my rotary cutter to cut this piece. <laughs> yeah, a reference, right? It's not like any of us enjoy looking at Zelda's butt. 
Pajama set, always hype. Yeah, who else here is wearing their pajamas while watching streams wherever you are? Okay, so this one is basically like the long, or the wide piece that's gonna wrap around and form like the, the shape of our bag. This looks like extra huge, so I think that it's gonna end up being smaller than this. I guess this is a pretty good opportunity to kind of visualize what it could look like. So this is like the front flap coming down, and this includes the um, seam allowance. So this is a little bit larger looking than what the final bag will be once it's sewn. But this kind of gives you a clue as to the shape and size. Now, this one is definitely longer than what we need. I think I overestimated in my drawings. But I don't know by how much exactly. So we're just going to start with this because I can manipulate it as we go, which is the whole point of doing a mock-up. So let's say that I wanted it to be six inches tall. And this will have to include like the width as well, which is three inches. Oh, I see what I was doing. All right, well, I'm not going to mess with it right now. I'm just going to start putting it together and then I'll be able to determine how much is extra and just kind of cut it off um, where I want it to be. Other people are having an, are we having an online pajama party right now? <laughs> may or may not be wearing pants at the moment. Nice. Well, I'm glad that you're all comfortable because we need to get comfortable here. So this is just a couple of scrap pieces. These are the same size, it's two layers. Um, and I'm going to kind of hash out my shape here. It's not a perfect rectangle. It is going to have um, some like estimated base dimensions though, so we're going to start drawing it like it's a rectangle and then we're going to round it out. Because um, it's slightly more narrow on the top and wider on the bottom, so um, we're just going to try to make a shape that looks like that. Uh, so I estimated that that needs to be seven and a half inches tall to include seam allowances and four inches wide, again including a seam allowance of a half inch on both sides. So that's what I'm going to start drawing. I'm just going to use my quilter square for this as well. Um, the fabric I'm using is the same kind of canvas as I used for the mock-up on the coat. Oh, I guess I can show that off too. Well, <laughs> it's like, it's over here. I'll show it off before the end of the stream, but I've got it mostly assembled. The sleeves are not on yet and the front panels aren't on yet. Um, but the most of the white body of the coat is together. So it's slowly looking like that. Dunelander27 donated $15. Thank you so much. There's no note, but I really appreciate that. Thanks for supporting our stream here today. What's an Asagao reference? What did I miss? Oh, <laughs> on your weeb shit. All right, so seven and a half is there. And I'm just going to draw it out on the other side. Um, bigger than it is. I guess you guys can't really see what I'm drawing. There's that, that uh, rectangle that I've got here. I'm going to grab another ruler. And I am going to put the seam allowances on here so that I can visualize it a little bit better and um, decide if I want to change anything before I cut it out. So now I'm just drawing in um, half inch seam allowances, which is what I generally use. You can use a half inch, um, a centimeter, uh, five eighths of an inch, just whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, you just need to be consistent across um, the whatever you're working on, your project. All right, so that kind of shows us a little bit better that it's actually the smaller triangle that we're looking at. And I still think that's gonna be really, really wide. It's gonna stick out for my body a lot. So maybe I should rethink, rethink making that so wide. Although there's a side pocket. 
So I'm not worrying about the side pocket right now, um, but there is a side pocket, and so that's why I need to think about having it be on the wider side because I need to be able to have room to install that pocket. So that's why I have it so freaking wide. But that just means it'll be a really nice, big, roomy bag, and I'll be able to actually include, uh, or I put my phone in it and other stuff, maybe my badge, depending on where I am. Whatever emergency cosplay supplies, eyelash glue that I won't walk around a con without. Thanks, Oatmeal Raisin, for saying that the costume looks like it's coming together well. I hope it is. I'm going to hold this up because I can kind of visualize it better. Hey, Link Fan. Link Fan donated $20 saying, hey, Heidi, can't stay for long, so I thought I'd drop in real quick. Well, thank you for stopping by. Always nice to see you here in the stream. Scarlet Moth is here. Yes, this will be a leather bag, um, Scarlet Moth was asking. And it looks like it's going to be pretty big. Um, the having to flip it inside out is going to lose a little bit of the size too. Um, so I think that I am actually going to keep this larger width just because we've got another pocket here. I just kind of really roughly sketched a rectangle in the general area where I think it needs to be. And it definitely looks like it has some, um, some solid dimensions. It's not like a really tiny bag in the reference image. Um, I'm going to have that up on, on my browser for my own convenience. Here we are. So in this uh, GIF that I post on Twitter, it looks like it's wider than it is tall, but it, in the image that I have for her winter look that's like on display on my Twitch here, here, it definitely looks like it's taller than it is wide. So I'm not 100% certain. Gaming historian, thank you for subscribing. Hello, friend. Thanks, guys. Thanks for for stopping in. Yeah, I would love to do another Let's Play with Jared, but it's just we're I, we're both always busy doing other things. So unless there was an opportunity where it was like natural and normal for me to be on his channel, like when we played Oscar together, that was fun um, because I also really wanted to play Oscar. But generally, he's just working on his own stuff, so I don't really feel the need to insert myself there or vice versa. Um, so I've got a metal ruler here that I'm going to use to cut this out, and we're just going to go with the size that it is right now. Uh, keeping in mind that the final product is going to be at least slightly smaller than um, it looks for the pattern, just because uh, the act of turning it inside out is going to kind of contract the fabric a little bit, and the thickness of the piping that's going to be in all of the seams is also going to contribute to that. So, I think this is a good size to start with. Uh, Jared's been doing really well. He's been recording, he's been playing a lot of Monster Hunter. He like made his top 10 best and worst um, games videos and then just immediately dived into playing Monster Hunter nonstop and I've like barely seen him since then. <laughs> just kidding, he still lives here, but he's been extremely preoccupied with Monster Hunter things. I really like using a rotary cutter on a cutting mat rather than a pair of scissors because you can get multiple pieces that are really clean um, and not a lot of distortion in the cut that would create a discrepancy in the size. So this is a nice efficient way to cut out your fabric as opposed to like pinning your patterns down and using scissors. All right, this guy is ready. This guy is ready, um, although it is definitely too large for what I want. So keeping in mind that the front opening is like, I don't know, maybe two thirds of the way here. I'm trying to decide exactly where, like wh at what height the side piece connects to the front piece. Um, yeah, it's probably pretty high up on the bag. Or I could just start it all the way at the very top and then just let whatever overlaps overlap. Okay. Um, I'm going to use Wonder Clips to clip these together. I like them better than pins for most of the time. I'm 
Violet Sand, yes, I'm behind on uploading my streams to YouTube, but I need to just get off my ass and do that. I've been so distracted because KatsuCon is like one of the, my biggest events for the year, so I'm um, preoccupied with preparations for that, but I need to not let my other, other responsibilities not quite go to waste. Alright. Hmm. I guess... No, I already calculated that. I don't need the... Um, I don't actually need any seam allowance at the top because that's open. There's no... Um, oh, I forgot. I, I, I cut a perfect rectangle. I said I was going to turn it into more of a rounded rectangle, and I didn't do that. So let's do that before we move on. But the top is going to be totally open on the sides in the sense that it's not connected to the flap that's going over it. So I actually don't need a seam allowance on the top. And now I'm debating whether or not I should slice that or if I planned that into my original plans. I can't remember. I like made my notes on this piece a little while ago. Um, and now I'm just now getting to turning that into a bag mock-up. Right now I'm just kind of sketching on some rounded corners. This is not super precise, but it's going to help us um, create the shape that we need. And then a corresponding outer corner. I'm just making the seam allowance kind of uh, match the curve that I drew on there. Oh, I would love to see Jared um, come onto a crafting stream with me. Oh yes, I'm player one tonight instead of player two, which we have the two matching mugs. Uh, Red Bard is cool says, my friends who go call Katsukon the Olympics of cosplay. Um, I would not call Katsukon the Olympics because it's just a convention. There's not like a contest. An international contest um, that includes you know, representatives from all over the world would be the World Cosplay Summit. So I would consider that the Olympics of cosplay. Um, Katsukon is a really cool event though. And it's very full of cosplayers who are um, generally bringing their best um, which is what I'm doing. I'm attempting to bring my best anyway. You want to make the best costume you can because people like to show up to this event in particular. Um, you know, in their fanciest work a lot of the time. That's kind of uh, what Katsukon is known for. And since it's one of the major early conventions of the year, a lot of people like to, I don't know, debut something dramatic. Uh, which, you know, if I'm being honest, I do that too, <laughs> with Zelda last year. This one isn't quite as, like, I don't know, dramatic looking, I guess, but, um, you know, I hope that it looks good. Uh, Katrina Face isn't going to go after all, I'm sorry. I hope that you have an opportunity to go. It's a wonderful event. Um, it's one of my favorites just because the costumes there are so top-notch and it's really easy to meet people and network and chat about stuff. Um, so I always have a good time there. I've always enjoyed that con a lot. So I've decided to... Oh, I guess I need to just taper that whole thing in. This is going to be a mess. Unlike my last my coat mock-up that was really nice because I tried hard to make it pretty the whole time. This is just gonna be a total mess, and you'll see that this is how I really am. But that's okay. I feel like most of you know that by now. Um, if I have missed anybody's comments or questions to me, don't forget to type at Atelier Heidi in the chat because I'm more likely to see that. Sometimes I miss um, things that are happening just because I'm trying to stay on task as well as talk to all of you, so. If I missed something that you wanted me to read or a question you wanted me to answer, just type it again. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to Katsu. Um, I always do just crazy amounts of photo shoots there compared to any other convention from the year. And I think that a lot of people kind of have that mentality of approaching it. These both garbage erasers. 
Yeah, they're both garbage erasers. <laughs> um, but because so many people travel to Katsukon from all over the country, you can work with photographers or cosplayers that you wouldn't generally see other places. I mean, obviously that's really subjective. Like, I'm used to going to Katsukon and seeing friends from Texas, um, which is where I used to live. Hey there, Zeddy donated $5, Zeddy42 saying, low on money, but I want to support your stream. Haven't been able to catch it since you moved. Excited about your present and future work. Thank you so much, Zeddy. That's very kind of you. Um, what other costumes am I bringing? MP Lafie is asking. Well, I have this one. I have Julia. Julia is going to be on Thursday. This one is going to be on Friday. I haven't talked about this costume at all, but um, on Saturday I'm going to be wearing a new version of Rey from the latest Star Wars movie, The Last Jedi. Um, the one that she wears that looks more or like more or less like her um, costume from the first movie, but it's like uh, more gray rather than tan. That's the version that I'm doing, um, and. So, you'll see more of that soon, but that one is on my, my schedule. So now I have a tapered, rounded, not quite rectangle, it's more of a trapezoid, kind of, but it's like really tall and narrow. Yeah, I guess that's technically what it is. How did I get into doing cosplay, asks Wheezy Peasy. Um, I just started doing it because I went to conventions and I saw people dressed up looking cool and I wanted to be cool like them, so, uh, as it turns out, it's not cool. <laughs> just kidding. It is cool if you're a nerd and you're into this kind of thing. Um, so yeah, then I just started making things. Like, well, I have always, always been an artist in other senses of the word, but... Uh, after I started attending conventions regularly, I got way more excited about making uh, costumes, specifically. So yes, I'm being very, very careful with my fingers because this is an extremely short blade. I guess I could be doing this on my little light desk, but I've got more space here. It's kind of hard to get these... Um, rounded corners because the angle's kind of tight compared to my blade. Oh shit, I guess the top isn't, no, the top doesn't need to be rounded, but only on one side. I'm trying to think. I'm going to keep it like this, and we're going to keep moving forward, and then we'll be able to take a look at it when it's together as a mock-up, and decide whether or not it's serving our purposes. So I'm not too worried about making this initial one flawless. This is just going to serve our purpose of um, figuring out what changes we need to make before we assemble it in leather. But yeah, this is going to be like sewn together on my machine rather than hand stitched. Oh, Camber, C. Amber Finch, babies, uh, in the chat saying, I'm actually working on that version of Ray right now, making her gun holster. That's awesome. Cool. Good luck with that. Is this also the ideal Sheikah slate pouch? I don't know. Um, I mean, Zelda has it for a little while in the, in the cutscenes in this game, but ultimately it's like Link's tool. So I don't think she's really like the one who's actively carrying it around most of the time, or at least that's that's just not my impression. So I don't think that um, the, the Sushika slates that I've seen prop makers make are bigger than this. I'll just say that. Like, I guess they could be other sizes, depending on how large you make it, but I don't think it would fit in this particular bag. Did I play Breath of the Wild all the way through? Yes, I did. I really liked it. Um, I didn't 100% the game, but I beat Ganon, and I beat all of the um, other guys. I, I have been looking for Koroks. I spent a long time just, like, going around and collecting everything, getting every um, suit of armor and stuff like that. And I did get really far doing that, but I didn't finish. So I think I have like 700 something Koroks. I, so like a lot, but not, I'm not all the way at the end yet. There's still some stuff I can do. Thank you, Tamako, or Tama, Tamakao. Uh, 
Yeah, this is like an advanced pizza cutter that I'm using for my fabric. Have I played Knights of the Old Republic? No, I haven't. Did not play that game. Um, Scarlet Moth is asking, what is my favorite thing to make out of sheepskin leather? I picked up a bunch of hides the other day and would love ideas. Well, you can use sheepskin for a lot of things. You can use that for clothes. Um, this bag is probably going to be sheepskin. Are you talking about sheep, like, with the hair on? Or are you talking about just, like, regular lambskin, like, a smooth hide? Um, because I wouldn't necessarily make everything out of the fuzzy hide, but if you're talking about just, um, just some leather. I made Diet's vest out of lambskin, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was lambskin. It was like mystery leather, but it looked and felt like lamb to me. Um, that was one of the, like, types of leather that I was most comfortable with, especially at the beginning, because it's a little bit, um, it's pretty thin, it's pretty easy to use. So you can make all kinds of stuff, garments, um, bags. This will probably be sheepskin or similar. I have to go pick out a hide for this, to be honest. So now I'm pinning this on my side piece onto my main, like, front back side piece. It's all one continuous thing. I'm just trying to do my best to, like, curve it around the corner there. It's camber like amber with a C. Okay, camber finch, awesome. Well, I'm glad that I, I doubted myself, but I guess I did pronounce it correctly. You have a, a light up Sheikah slate that you keep your phone in, says Morgan the Adventurer. That's awesome. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, I've seen some friends do versions of the prop that are really awesome, that are like hollow or designed to hold something or designed to have your phone or an iPad like in as a screen so that you can play with it and kind of simulate the, um, the effect or the interface of the Sheikah slate in the game, which I think is pretty neat. So I guess once I eventually get to making a Link cosplay, I'm gonna have to solve some of those problems and figure out what I want my Sheikah slate to be. Um, Scarlet is saying she's got a smooth hide, lambskin leather, but also some suede sides. Yeah, you can use the suede side or the the smooth like um, grain side. Uh, you could use either one of those for any types of garments. So something that has like a little bit of structure or body, probably rather than just like something you want to be loose fitting, but yeah, there's no limit to what you can make with some nice lamb skin. Waluigi says, I only have 51, I didn't know there were so many Koroks. Oh, I'm sorry that you can't post links, um, we have Scarlet Moth here. Scarlet Moth, would you mind um, permitting a link from Morgan the Adventurer, and that way they can share uh, the picture of their Sheikah Slate. Uh, yeah, there's actually like 900, I'm pretty sure. I think that's the total number, but I'm not near that yet. I've like got like 700, so I've got quite a few, but not, not quite there. The short hair reminds me of, reminds Universal is saying, the short hair reminds me of Judge Anderson from Dread. Now that's a cosplay I'd love to see. I watched that movie, but I don't remember what the look is. I'll have to look that up. Have you ever made a costume with lights slash light up components? Um, is a question that Metal Jenny is asking me. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't very good. <laughs> um, you can buy like little pre-made LEDs and insert them into your costume. That's like the easy way to do it. Or if you want to actually learn about like soldering and LEDs and all of that, um, there are several really good cosplay resource books by, done by different cosplayers or makers. Um, and I recommend like getting one of those texts to start with. Okay, it looks like my initial estimation was actually not that far off. I predicted that this was going to be way too big, but letting it drape over it actually only needs to be trimmed a little bit to be accurate to it, the way it looks. So that's good. I'm glad I didn't back, back off of my plan. Man, I'm having a hard time talking in this stream. <laughs> There we go. Morgan the Adventurer now has permission. Sorry about that. Thank you, Scarlet Moth, for handling that. 
You're drowning in Korok seeds right now. Yeah, after a point, he stops rewarding you for them. You're just like, dang, I've worked so hard for these Koroks. <laughs> All right, so this is uh, Morgan's link to her. Oh, that's cool. So this is a light up Sheikah Slate. Is that, what do you have inside you? You said that's your phone? That's pretty neat. All right, I've got my coffee here. You can use it to take pictures and selfies. That's really cute. Yeah, exactly like Link. Mm -hmm. All right, now I should make a mark on here for where I'm gonna start this. I decided to do it like half an inch down from the top edge. Is where the side is gonna meet the, um, the front piece. Now I'm just going to clip this one in and try to make it match as closely to the other side as I can. So yeah, Morgan the Adventure, that's really badass. Uh, Waluigi's asking me if I'm looking forward to the Stardew Valley multiplayer. Um, I haven't been playing Stardew Valley, sorry. I don't actually play that many video games. Like, I generally play everything that I cosplay from, but um, I'm so busy cosplaying and making things that I'm not... I haven't been sitting around playing anything. Uh, Breath of the Wild was the first game in a long time that I got really hooked on and I spent many hours, um, you know, finding all of the secrets that I could and, and collecting stuff and, and doing all the extras. But yeah, I know that Jared is probably really excited about that because he enjoyed Stardew quite a bit, so. So I'm just like loading this down with these clips. <laughs> you can't really put too many on here unless it just totally impedes your ability to sew. But you know what, that's fine. I also probably should have put them in the other direction, but we're gonna make it work. I have full confidence that this bag is gonna come together on this stream. Hey, fairy dust. Piano Sammy Loki obsessed with Stardew. Jared did tell me that I should cosplay as his waifu from Stardew Valley, which I believe was Abigail. Is that the one with the pink hair? Uh, purple hair? Sorry. I, I, I forget. But um, he did make that request at one point. It was quite some time ago now. <laughs> Oh, Fairy Dust says, my crafting room is pretty. Thank you so much. I I tried this time. My last one was okay. Like, I had some nice things in it, but it, overall it wasn't, like, designed or decorated very well. Um, but I tried to make this one cuter because I spent so much time in here. And I feel like it helps improve my mood. All right, here is the general shape of our bag. I'm going to sew it together before I trim any of this off. Um, but you can see what I'm going for here and, um, you know, what it's, have an idea of what it's going to look like, I hope. Hmm, stream issues, okay. Okay, people seem to be responding to me now. Is the stream coming back? It's starting to buffer. Hmm, I wonder if that's on my end, if that happened for everybody at once. I'm wired, I'm hardwired to the internet. I'm not even on Wi-Fi in my house, so... If it's not working, I don't know why, because it sucks. Stream is back online. It's not down. Okay. All right. Let me know if um, that did anything. I just kind of uh, made sure that I was on, that I had selected the wired connection. 
the video seems laggy. I'm sorry. Like, I've, yeah, yeah, I'm checked in that I'm um, on that wired connection and not on the Wi-Fi. So, okay, cool. Uh, people are saying that it's back up for them, so that's good. In case you missed what I was saying, I was just pointing out that we can now kind of see the general shape and size of this bag and what I have planned for it. Um, so I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and then turn this into an actual bag. And I can turn my camera back a little bit too now. Cool. All right, well, here's my sewing cam. All right. <laughs> this is just the same camera that was my... Um, my ironing cam last time. So I'm turning this up a little bit. Let me know if you can still hear me or if the audio is low. Uh, Drawn from Ohio is asking me, have I ever seen slash done characters from the Toho project? The type of thing I would love to cosplay myself, but they're a little complex for my skill set. Um, I'm familiar. I think I've heard of that, but I haven't like really looked very hard at the character design. So Sorry, I haven't haven't made any plans to do that one, but that sounds cool. I'll have to look into it. All right, I am now far away from my stream chat, unfortunately. I wonder if I can split up on my phone. Oh, I don't even have the thing downloaded. All right, I'm not going to try to do that. I'm just going to have to come back over and read your comments when I'm done sewing. So my apologies for that. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to sew it like this. I wish I had flipped my clips over, but I didn't, so this is my. Now I have to deal with it. Unfortunately, this sewing machine, well, it's not unfortunate. It has various speed settings, but it's even the slowest settings are pretty fast. So it's hard to control the stitches at, um, when you're trying to go at a really slow speed. So it can be a little bit jumpy. I'm trying to uh, slide this around in a way that maintains that edge. I can always adjust the curve if this ends up being um, too tight or just difficult to sew, but I'm going to give it my best shot and we'll see how this turns out. industrial um, sewing machine. It looks a little bit different than the ones you're probably used to seeing in people's houses. But it's very powerful and it's very useful for um, a lot of things, especially if you're using uh, heavy duty or fabrics.
my sound levels okay, Jared? You can check. You can check. Could you do that for me? That sure. would be so thoughtful and wonderful. So showing this off for my sewing cam, I've got one half of it sewn. Um, it's not flawless. I would love to clip this um, before sewing it. Maybe I'll just do it on this side. Or I'll just wait and do it on my, my final pattern um, and make sure everything's laying really nicely. Because it kind of got clipped in there a little bit, but that's okay. It's for our mock-up, I think this is great. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side now. Um, starting from here. I think that I decided that our final pattern does not need to be rounded up at the top, but um, we'll see how this goes. fabric to help it lay and kind of convince it to go around corners like this um, where it's pretty tight. Oops, that was a little too fast, but I think we got it. I think we made it. be back over there to answer questions and things in just a moment. We're almost done sewing. Next time I do a sewing stream, I will make sure that my uh, Twitch chat is on my phone so that I can just bring it over here with me. Seeing Aries in after him. He doesn't care about the cat bed, Jared. Who care? Who make him care? Uh -huh. All right, good luck. I tried. See, he's just looking at you like I don't care about this cat bed. Your sound is fine. I mean, it's hard to hear you when you're all the way back here. Yeah, but, I'm trying. Yeah, you were some general here. All right, I'm done sewing this bag. I'll be over there in a moment. Hey now. Sorry. Here, it's tripping over stuff in my room. So here's how this came out. And I will be back over here. Hey guys, can you hear Aries? Let's see if we can get him over here on camera. Aries, come hang out with me. And swap back to here. Oh wait, this is what I wanted. Hey guys, what's up? My precious floopy son is on the other side of this desk. Come here, come here Aries. All right, let me check back through this chat. All right, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of questions directed at me since I went and sat and sewing. Wheezy peasy, you think you're wearing the same pants as me? Did you get them at Ross? Because that's where I got mine. Hey, Katrina face. 
lightning fast. The the best reference for Zelda's bag was booty gift. That's so true. Army of Ancients, thank you so much for the fake ivy for my photo set that I'm working on. Um, that's going to be in, used alongside the fake plants that I had on the list from last time. So thank you so much for that. Um, oh, Lightning Fast is heading out. Well, thanks for stopping by to say hey. Oh, here we go. The boy has graced us with his presence. <laughs> He's so red. He's just as red as me. Praise the God of War. Yeah, he's wearing his blue shirt because he's apparently going to go film something, and that's why he wanted Aries to come in here, because Aries will just, like, sit in the house and scream, um, or walk around the house screaming. So, um, anytime Jared is filming something for his channel, he tries to pass Aries off on me so that he won't become a disruption. <laughs> All right, well, he doesn't like to be picked up like that anymore. He wants to sit down. Yeah, so this is now um, an Aries petting stream. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> hey, yeah, see, I added the uptime function. Um, someone actually used it now. Because people used to add the, to use that uptime command, and it wasn't set up. Uh, and I was like, hmm, I should probably adjust that. So this is what we've created. <laughs> I've still got a fluffy boy in my lap. Um, but as you can see, it's a little bit of a softer shape once we turn it inside out. And I haven't, like... You heading out? He's, he's heading out. Uh, I haven't changed the shape or clipped it. I'm going to clip it on the inside, which I probably should have done before, before stitching it together, but I didn't, and now I have to live with it. Yes, goodbye, fluffy boy. Don't bother Jared, he's busy. <laughs> Baby boy, yes, hi Mil you. Lawrence Turtles is saying, what cosplay slash costume would you recommend for a beginner? Very beginner. I would recommend doing whatever you want as a beginner. Now, if you, um, you know, don't have a lot of confidence in making things, I would suggest um, choosing a costume design that you think you can put together with mostly pre-made items. You can always go to like a thrift store, um, or Amazon is a good place to search for cheap base clothes. What is the material is the bag made out of? This is made out of um, canvas. This is like some leftover canvas that I used to do the mock-up for the coat. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just flipping around the corners so that they will lay flatter. which I should actually clip out little triangles. Because I need that seam allowance um, to fold onto the inside. I'm trying to fold a larger amount of fabric onto the inside of a smaller seam. Um, onto the smaller side of the seam, rather. So in order to do that, you need to remove some of the material which is what I'm doing now, creating little triangles. And then right after this, we are going to draw some of the other features onto this bag mock-up so that we'll place, we'll know the size and the placement of the little pockets that are on the side. I'm gonna um, add triangles to this other side too. I won't be lazy try to make this right or you know mostly right it is a mock-up and I am on the stream <laughs> meow hello Nilu. I'm glad you can make it to the stream Katrina face is asking Lauren turtles what are you into Lauren turtles is the one who's asking for cosplay suggestions um, I could say that a good place to start I'm trying to move my camera sorry guys uh, a good place to start is like Pokemon costumes because um, they have like cute little outfits and they're usually pretty recognizable because a lot of play a lot of people play Pokemon um, so like one of my very first costumes is a team rocket grunt outfit where it's like a black t-shirt with the letter R on it and I did have to put that together I put the R on the t-shirt um, and there's you know a couple different ways you could do that you could paint it you could you know, add another piece of fabric that's cut out as an R. You could do a number of different things. Um, 
or just any of the like trainer costumes because a lot of them are really really cute but they're like simple and sort of everyday clothing but they kind of have like a certain cartoony aesthetic so stuff like that um, you can usually find very similar items that are just like for sale as is um, you know solid color solid color shirts and skirts and stuff like that so I would start there if you're just um, not confident in, or not wanting to invest, I guess, in a lot of stuff, and you're not trying to, like, sign yourself up for, for more than you can handle, um, that's usually a good place to start. If anybody else has other, uh, suggestions for series that have, um, costumes like that that can be from the real world, so to speak, let her know. Well, thank you, Strange Cup of Tea, saying that um, they could hear fine and I don't need to worry about audio. Well, I hope that you enjoy chilling with me and watching me sew stuff, and I hope sewing along with me or doing something creative along with me, even if you can't, um, even if I can't be interacting nonstop the entire time. Boom. Okay, that helped so much. This helped our, our fabric lay so much more smoothly. now that I cut out those corners. So that's the importance of clipping your corners. I should probably have done that and, you know, done it right and showed you guys this is this is how you do it right. I'm going to slide this back over slightly so you can see a little bit more of my table. Uh, but this is where I was saying I am going to trim the front slightly because it's not going to, I don't want to cover that much. I would say I'll bring it up to like I don't know exactly how far. Maybe like that far? I'll clip it for now. I forgot my clips over by the sewing machine. Oh, MP Lafay, I'm always streaming at your bedtime. Sorry about that. Thanks for coming to my streams anyway. Katrina Face is also saying Pokemon. Is there a particular reason you would have clipped the corners prior to stitching? i always been taught to do it after, like I'm doing uh, Komashika is asking me this question. Um, so when I was first taught, I learned the way that I just did it now and the way that you're talking about where you sew it first and then you clip it. Um, then I went and worked as an intern for God Save the Queen Fashion, she doesn't do it that way, she does it the other way. She clips things beforehand because it helps the fabric to lay smoother. You have more ability to adjust it if you've already got clips in it beforehand. But when I clip it beforehand, I don't clip out full triangles, I just make little tiny slashes, and I don't clip all the way to the seam allowance because I don't want um, to risk like sewing into that cut mark. Um, so. That's a, you can, it's a matter of preference. You can do it either way. You have a little bit more control if you clip it at least partly beforehand because the fabric um, will stretch around the corner more easily. So I, I guess I could have done it that way to show you what I was talking about, but I didn't. <laughs> Strange cup of tea is drawing. That's fun. Lauren says that they don't play Pokemon. Well, that's fine, you know, sorry. But something kind of along those lines um, for something that you do like, whether it's whatever genre of game, um, but something that's like a little bit more simplistic or like a little bit more similar to um, kind of real world clothing. Um, I did not play Doki Doki Literature Club, but I heard him play it, and so I know about what all is in it, and I won't, no spoilers here, but, um, I probably won't play it. It sounds like it's a lot of <laughs> emotional stuff. Hey, Azikira, thanks for coming by and, and stopping by and saying hey. Yeah! Uh, Drawn from Ohio is talking about a simple way to do cosplays that are easily adaptable into the real world is to do things from comic books that have been adapted into movies like Marvel or DC Universe. Yeah, where the characters are wearing street clothes at various times, um, and then you just find the right combination of clothes and people will um, 
recognize you a lot of the time. Uh, Scarlet Moth, I was not home during Dice Camera Action. I was over at my friend Ashley's where we were working on all of this stuff. But I heard, I, when I, by the time I got home, he was drinking. So I just walked in and I was like, oh, uh, I guess you had a, a fun afternoon. <laughs> and he's just like very sad looking. So I have marked off where I think the good stopping point for this should be. And this does look also extra wide because it has a seam allowance on it. Um, this is going to have a gold binding, like a piping, sorry, not a binding, a piping that goes all the way throughout. And it's going to continue onto this. So this is going to be, I'm going to fold this over and flip it to kind of give us a better representation. Yes, please no spoilers, um, but, you know, I, I don't think it's a spoiler to say Jared was upset after dice camera action, because Jared is always upset after dice camera action. So, you know, it is what it is. So right now I'm just folding this top lip under so that it is... Um, so the extra fabric isn't sticking out weirdly. Basically there's a seam allowance all the way around the outside of this flap and I don't want to cut it off but I don't want to, I want to just be able to visualize what it will look like once that's tucked in. And I think it could actually be slightly longer because if this to go flat there there because once it's leather it'll have slightly more body yeah I do want it to hang a little bit lower so okay I'm gonna like take this down slightly. it's like five eighths of an inch maybe so right now I'm just folding rather than cutting or marking with a pencil because then it will be messier um, and I'm not certain about my placement yet. I'm just messing around. <laughs> uh, Bread Galaxy is asking, do I recommend using clips over pins? Um, I've been thinking about purchasing clips, but I'm not sure yet. Um, I do prefer them over pins in most cases. If you're working with a super lightweight fabric like a silk chiffon or something, I would still maybe use like really, really thin silk pins rather than these because they are heavier than pins and so they will pull on the fabric um, more, but it only really matters if you're working with something super, super delicate. When you're working with anything that's sturdier, heavier fabric like this canvas or leather or lots and lots of other fabrics that I use, um, I would say the clips are better because they don't put holes in the fabric um, and because they don't distort the fabric when it uh, goes through the sewing machine because we're going to do a little object lesson here. The piece of a pin and a piece of fabric. When you put the pin through the fabric, you push it up and down and then there's like a distortion here because the um, the fabric is folded more or less or it's it's being displaced so it's there's like a little lump in it and you want this to be as flat as possible when you're pushing it through the machine the thicker this is the more layers this has the more um distorted that is so here's like four layers of the same fabric and this like lump that the pin is creating is a lot more obvious and it will matter a lot more on a really thick uh, fabric that you're sewing through or lots of, of multiple layers of thicker fabric. It does create um, a distortion. So if I'm trying to sew the exact same seam and I use clips on it, then it lays completely flat as I feed it through the machine. Put another clip on here and it's not creating any distortion and the, the layers are all married together perfectly without um, any lumps caused by pins. So that is why I prefer pins or clips over pins. Hopefully that made sense to you.
Yeah, these clips, um, if you're going to buy them, get them from Amazon. They're way cheaper on Amazon than, like, the actual name brand ones that you can get in Joanne that are, like, really stupidly expensive for how few you get. All right. So I have this bag pretty much planned out. Let me check this. So I made the, the flap a little bit longer and still accounting for how far it has to go over the top before it bends down. That's kind of what we made it look like. And if I, if I cut it longer, I'm sorry, if I pattern it to be somewhat longer and then I decide, oh, this is way too long, I can always shorten it later. I can't really put more fabric on though if I make it too small to be in it. So this might be a little bit on the, the long side because it is going almost halfway down. I don't think Zelda's goes down that far. No, it doesn't. Dang it. I might, I might bring it back up a little bit. Clips would be better for stretched vinyl. Yes, that's what Nolu was saying and Scarlet Moth was say, suggesting that they're good for leather. That's true on both accounts um, because sometimes you can put holes in your fabric with a pin and it doesn't matter and sometimes it does matter because um, stuff like leather, stuff like uh, vinyl, anything that has like a rubber coating on it, it once you put a hole in it, it's going to be there permanently. Um, so you want to avoid that or anything with like a foil finish. Trimming off some of this extra bag flap. <laughs> Army of Ancients says that's why every cosplay I make is Stardew Valley related. Is that uh, for the simplicity of the costumes or just that you love Stardew Valley? Probably both if you're cosplaying from it all the time. Is this part, uh, is part of the outfit around the neck a part of the coat or is it sort of pseudo scarf? It's a part of the coat. Um, in the the drawing, like the breakdown of this, there's like some kind of line drawings over here that kind of uh, give you an indication of how the layers fit together. And um, it's shown as a part of the, uh, well, it's a, a part of the cape layer rather. So the coat has no, it just has like a regular collar. I mean, there's no collar attached to it. It just, is this, it just ends at the neck. And then the cape layer um, lays on top of that. And um, so according to this diagram here, the, the fluffy part around the neck is a part of the cape. Army of Ancients is saying next time at a 50 millimeter non-adjustable lens, I have one. Um, so that's why it's not on there. But thank you so much, Army of Ancients. That is a good, um, a good suggestion and a good lens that I use quite a bit. So thanks for the the offer. I appreciate that. Will I be wearing under the coat layer? I'm not entirely sure. I guess it depends on how tight the coat is on me. Um, once I get it all together, I can find out. Um, I would imagine that I'll probably just wear some kind of basic long sleeve shirt. It's you know soft and comfy. I don't want to be wearing nothing under it, but um, it doesn't really matter because I'm not going to, you know, I don't know what Zelda is wearing under it. I'm not going to take the coat off when I'm in costume because it is my costume. How's the Zelda wig going? Uh, it's mostly together. I've got it um, kind of ready to be teased out. And I thought about working on that on stream, but I just wasn't confident enough. I haven't done that particular thing before to a wig. Um, to try to make it like super fluffy with teasing. So I've been watching a lot of tutorials and I feel like I can make it happen, but I didn't want to have to do it on stream live and then be, you know, blundering and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'll probably just do that in my own time. But I feel like, I feel confident that I can make it look how I want it to. All right, so this is now my adjusted length. Um, I'm kind of holding it out a little bit because it's heavy with the clips on it, but that's where it's going to sit. And that's how wide it's going to be, and this is the general dimensions. I do like the, um, I kind of sketched on the, the outline 
of the little pocket. Um, so I think that my guess for those dimensions is pretty close. So I just kind of darkened my rectangle a little bit. So I'm not going to worry about um, adding the pocket on there right now. I'm just going to do that a little bit later tonight after that is ready to go. Um, if you have a 50 millimeter lens and you're doing a great job, can't wait to see how the Breath of the Wild costume turns out. Thank you very much, uh, Army of Ancients, saying that. Yeah, the 50 millimeter was one of the ones I started with. Um, and I upgraded to a different 50 mil that was... Um, had a slightly wider aperture, so it's like a 1.4. It's not the 1.2, because that one was way too expensive, but I at least have the 1.4 now, um, rather than the 1.8 where I started. Okay, uh, so I'm ready to move on to the next part of this, which is going to be making the little closure. Um, and I'm gonna change my camera settings up. I'm gonna move here and work on my little light desk. I guess I can move my keyboard out of the way now. Uh, let me grab one or two other things from around the room and then we'll get started on making the little uh, clasp for this. Hello, KZ is NBK. Let's slide this over a little bit. Here's Darth Vader. I'm going to turn off my lights back here for now. All right, I'm back over here. Question says, Waluigi, how did I meet Pro Jared? Um, we met at a convention, sort of. We like saw each other and I was like, who's that guy? And then I had my friend introduce me to him. But yeah, I, I answered that question in more detail in a Q&A video on my YouTube channel. So if you want to hear the full version of that story, you can go watch that video. All right, that's slightly better now. Um, so here I am with more stuff. I was looking for another piece of elastic that I thought I had laying around, but now I can't find it. Where would I put that? Oh, it would be under trim. Hold on just a second. I'm going to look for one more thing. I think I was searching for something that no longer exists. I like recently went through and cleaned out a couple of my stashes of things 
and threw away like small amounts of stuff that um, I determined wasn't useful and I guess I threw away something that I'm now looking for that isn't uh, <laughs> doesn't exist. Hello Crimson, welcome uh, to our chat here. Anna is heading out, have a good night, glad you could make it. Oh hey, here's this thing that I was going to show you guys. This is the coat, or most of the coat, so you can get a little glimpse at that. Um, all of the vertical panels are all sewn together. The only thing that's not attached here is the sleeves. Um, so the sleeves still have to be sewn on, I just didn't have time to do that before the stream started, so I decided to work on this other stuff instead. Um, what I'm going to do next is figure out my plan of attack for this, um, this little attachment. Oh, there's a dark circle. So these two things are, um, jars of epoxy sculpt. It's part A and B. You mix them together and it creates like a putty slash clay kind of, um, substance that will harden and, um, turn into something that's more permanent. Uh, oh, here's my phone. So I have my reference image on my phone too. I'm gonna pull it up here for my own convenience. So on my phone here, I'm just looking at the same GIF that I posted, um, except I screenshotted it so it's not moving around and it's easier to look at. Um, so, I'm going to show this here. <laughs> this is just the same image blown up on my phone. And you can get a little bit more detail as to what, the, um, what that closure looks like. And from my best guess, it is a, um, like two cords that are coming down with a like triangle button, I guess you could call it, um, that slides under a strap on the main bag. Gift Nova says my hands are pretty. Well, thank you. Uh, Scolio set. I think I, no, Scolio reset. I probably is how you say your name. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. Um, says, hello, I'm new on the stream, but interested in cosplay. But motivation isn't there yet to make one for myself. Well, I hope that you feel inspired by something that you see or learn or that we talk about here. Um, yes, epoxy sculpt is really cool and I'll show you how it works here in just a minute. Um, but I'm going to try to create this little triangular piece and I really thought I had some blue elastic. I think I just, I think I just had so little that I tossed it, but I have this silver elastic and I think I'm going to go with this. I'm like frustrated because I, I'm looking for something that I think I no longer own, but I saw it recently enough and I guess I threw it away. Scolio reset, I got it right. Well, I'm glad. Welcome to our stream community, if you want to hang out with us here. Oh, is the mic up too high? I turned it up a little bit because I was over um, behind. I was farther away, so I turned up the gain. Let me know if that audio is okay. It's not peaking. Okay. Oh, good night, fairy dust. All right. So I guess I'm just going to use this because I don't have my um, blue stuff that I thought was around here. That's no matter. I could also use black. Or I could wait and go get some blue stuff because I'm annoyed now that I don't have it. But I just cut like a little um, chunk of this. Um, and this is going to become the two strands that are kind of like sticking off the top here. Man, you can really see, you can really see the detail on there. All right. I wish I had blue, but I don't. And I want to go ahead and make this now. So if I, if I decide later on that this is horrible and wrong and not what I want because it's not blue, then I can make it again and it won't be difficult, but I was planning on just doing all this on stream today, so I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I'll find it tomorrow, that's how it works. Well, I guess I can do this again tomorrow if I find it tomorrow. I'm just cutting some masking tape and I just got a paper plate here to serve as kind of my temporary uh, work surface. So I'm going to 
make a loop. And basically this amount of this elastic that's sticking out here is going to be inside the epoxy sculpt. Um, I'm going to sculpt the tiny triangle on top of this so it's totally encased. Um, and then everything else I just want to mask off for now so that it's not going to get dirty from the epoxy sculpt. A light sky blue would work if I do it again. Yeah, that's what I... Like, I swear, I had some elastic that I had used as like an elastic piping on an older costume. And I guess I just threw whatever the whatever extra I had, I guess I just threw away. Um, I really thought I had some. But, like I said, I cleaned house recently, so I might have been remembering throwing it away and not, oh, I have that. Um, because, of course, that's how it works. Alright, so I'm just um, covering this with masking tape so it doesn't get messy from the epoxy sculpt. Because the epoxy sculpt can be slightly messy. Oh, and I also need a tiny cup of water, which I don't have prepared. Let me try to think where I put my tiny cups. Ugh. I'll figure it out, don't worry. So I have like hella extra material here on the end. Um, I didn't measure this or anything, I just cut a strip that I knew would be definitely more than long enough and that's all that matters. Alright, and I'm going to throw the extra pieces out. Oh. Milieu says his cat is screaming for attention. Sounds like my cat. Um, who, yeah, just wants to be a distraction intentionally because why are you doing anything besides paying attention to them? What are we working on at the moment? Um, we are going to make, I'll bring it up again here on my phone. This is really distorted looking, but this is the, uh, the way, this is the clasp of the bag. Um, so for us, this is the, the bag that I just sewed. I have to determine how large this is, um, which isn't a bad idea before we start doing anything else. Okay, so that folds down onto the front here. Um, then we'll have a horizontal tab that is a part of the bag itself. Um, and then this will have the two strands that are apparently an elastic. And get this reference image again. They will be connected to a triangle piece, which seems to be curved more than like a true triangle, but it's kind of shaped generally like an arrowhead. And my drawing there was really messy, but I think that that is uh, kind of roughly the size of the thing I'm trying to make. Uh, maybe slightly larger. I'm going to make it larger to get a little bit more of that cartoony feel. And so I can make this triangle as large as I want and then um, I can always sand it down as I need to or whatever. I'm spacing these out so that they're not directly next to each other. I should have just done that when I taped them, but I think that's fine because this is more than enough um, to grip onto the tr to be inside the triangle so that it's really secure. Everyone's talking about their cute cats. All right, um, I needed one more thing. Oh, I needed my cup of water before I start, so I'm gonna grab that. Mm. Mm. I'm not going to go anywhere. I have a little jar sitting by me. I'm just going to pour some of my drinking water in it. Which I have. 
have over here? Scolio reset has four cats. I'm only allowed to have one. Otherwise, I would have multiple cats. Okay, so now I have a tiny jar uh, full of water over here, and I'm just going to use that to help me um, work with the epoxy sculpt a little bit. Now, yeah, this um, this elastic elastic is larger than the black elastic I have, so I definitely want to go with this one. I was just wondering if I have any sort of cord that's blue, because it doesn't necessarily have to be elastic. I just thought, oh, that would be nice. Um, yeah, but dang it, Heidi, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you get the right thing? Do you think the base of the bag looks good so far, Waluigi? Well, thank you. I decided that these are too close together within my little within the confines of my little tape guy, so I'm just gonna spread it out and then retape it. Using my bag as a guide. So if they can be that far apart. Okay. So that is the amount of um, elastic that's going to be sticking out and therefore buried on the interior of our epoxy sculpt. Just make sure there aren't any gaps. I'm going to go and check one last time. I don't want to delay this any further. I want to get started, but I am going to just really quickly double check in my bin over there and see if I have anything else, even if it's not the material, the, the, the cording that I originally thought I had. Just to have anything that's blue. I must have thrown away what I had before. So my other options that I have here are, this is brown and another thicker black cord. Um, so I'm gonna kind of check and see if this is closer to the size or the style that I want. That could be nice, because it's a little bit thicker compared to this stuff, which isn't really substantial. Um, this is closer to the size of the silver, but it's still slightly bigger. I don't know, what are you guys thinking? Aries Bahamut, yes, his last name is Bahamut. I'm sorry, his middle name is Bahamut. His last name is O'Farrell Knabenbauer. It's hyphenated. <laughs> Everyone's chatting with their, about their cats. All right, um, whenever you guys are, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Somebody give me some feedback on this. Um, should I go with the silver cord that I already have? Based on this image that's super blown up and distorted, it definitely looks like it's a light color. I wish I had blue, but I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and, and move forward with my silver because I don't want to delay this any further. And if I have to redo it, I'm going to redo it in blue and not this black or brown. So I answered my own question after asking for your feedback, <laughs> um, which is something that I normally do anyway. Oh, Gift Nova and Danielle JW are both saying I should use black. Aries Muhammad, Knabenbauer, O'Farrell oh, Knabenbauer the first. Okay, well, let's just let's just keep going. I'm gonna move this out of here because you guys know what I'm working on by now. So this is the epoxy sculpt. It comes in two jars. They have different lids and they look different inside the jar. Um, I need one or two more things, sorry. I've got a couple sculpting tools, which I shouldn't really, I think I can mostly just do this one with my, um, my hands. People are saying all colors. Uh, I can't really dye the silver because it's got like a metallic coating. Um, really I can just redo this with, uh, with blue cord if I want to. <laughs> 
Silver blue is a good combo. I agree with that. I think that I'm going to stick with the silver just because it's a light color. And that's what I want. Um, but maybe I'll redo this with some blue. So I've just grabbed a popsicle stick and I'm just going to scoop a little bit out. Um, this stuff is safe to touch with your hands. I'm going to scoot that. Okay, sorry, there you are. Uh, how much of this do I need? Probably not very much. I like to mix up a little bit more than what I think I'll need. Um, so that I have extra rather than having to mix twice. Yeah, that's definitely a lot. So I'm just kind of eyeballing. Um, I need to match. There's, so there's part one, or I don't know, I guess part A, technically, is what this is. So Ruth Blue is a good combo. Largo says, I have a cosplay idea, but it requires a fat suit. I mean, does it require a fat suit, or do you just think it would work better with a fat suit? Um, I don't have any ideas on how to make a fat suit. That's probably the sort of thing I would try to buy and then layer um, costumes over. Lawrence Turtles is saying, will it come off the cord? No, because I have, um, a, I'm going to be sculpting this on the loop. This loop will be totally encased and it won't be able to, to go anywhere or move. Casual Viking is heading out. Well, thank you for chilling with us for a bit. Um, so I'm just kind of rolling this into a ball as well. I need to make this darker. Part B needs to be a little bit bigger. I need uh, two balls of roughly equal size is my goal here. Requires. This guy's a fat man. <sighs> anyway, you just kind of warm this up with your hands. This is I have. This is like a leftover bottle that I haven't touched in several months since before I moved. Um, so it's a little bit odd. All right, what do you guys think? I think those are about the same size. Um, it just needs to be pretty close. It doesn't need to be like super crazy exact, um, but it'll work. Okay. So now I'm just going to start mushing it up. And this is, um, basically on its own, the two pieces don't do anything. Um, together you mix them up and it becomes this putty. It is water soluble. So I'm using a little bit of water here to kind of prevent it from sticking to my fingers too much. Um, it, it's really, really sticky when you first mix it, or it's it's stickier when you first mix it. You can use water to get a little bit of that stickiness to go away. And then it hardens um, to a soft cure within about four, four hours. You have up to four hours to continue manipulating it. And then at that point, it's um, kind of hardened past the point where you continue to sculpt on it. But um, between that after the first four hours, well, after 24 hours, it's completely hardened. Um, and after that, it, you can't manipulate it at all. It's just, it is what it is. So I've got my bag over here that's kind of um, serving as my rough guideline for what I want this to look like. 2D Firefly, welcome to our, our chat stream tonight. Do I get my stuff in a Hobby Lobby or a craft, specialty craft store? I bought this on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. I don't generally go to Hobby Lobby, but I don't go to, well, I go to the craft stores that are around me, and unfortunately there's not a huge selection here. So I'm trying not to cover the, um, trying not to cover the masking tape. I want the masking tape to kind of create an edge for us, but now the, um, the elastic cord, the silver cord, is now totally encased inside this putty, so I will use a sculpting tool to kind of make that more precise. I want this to be kind of a shallow and wide triangle. So right now it's extremely soft, and as time goes on, it's going to slowly start to harden, um, and then it actually gets a little bit easier to work with when it's slightly more hard rather than being super, super soft. Uh, Lawrence Turtles is 
stressed out and doesn't want to do her homework. That is extremely relatable. I feel that way. Or I felt that way when I was in school. Well, I hope that you're able to take care of your responsibilities because, you know, it does matter. Um, but maybe you can take a break with us for a while. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna kind of push that down with my popsicle stick. I'm not a great sculptor, by the way. Like, I think this will be fine, especially when I'm done with it. Right now it's so soft that it's really hard to build up a shape because any time that I touch it, it's just like mushing down into nothing. Um, but the idea is that I will create a rough shape and then probably sand it down to be really smooth. Um, because with this epoxy sculpt, it's just really hard to work with for like the first 30 minutes, probably. Um, and as it hardens, it's a little bit easier to manipulate because it starts to maintain its shape a little bit more. And right now when I'm like trying to freeform sculpt, um, it's like any sort of pressure that I put on it just displaces the clay somewhere else. <laughs> Well, it's not technically a clay, but that's kind of how it behaves. So right now I'm just trying to round the shape a little bit. Even it up. Okay, it's kind of turning into more of a triangle. This is a slow process, especially because of the how soft it is and how annoying that is. Um, but once it stops being so mushy that it just like kind of dissolves as I try to shape it. I mean, not actually dissolves, but it just the shape kind of is so mushy that it's hard to to really um, fine tune it. Um, so I'll have to wait a little bit before I can keep doing that. What are my thoughts on Animal Crossing? That's another game that I'm not really playing. Um, I know that lots and lots of people love Animal Crossing, so I've been told that it's very, very good, but I just haven't. Oh wait, no, that's not true. I played some Animal Crossing, just not very much. Um, and then I suffered from so much anxiety because I wasn't visiting my villagers that I never continued playing. So yeah, that's, that's what happened with me in Animal Crossing is that I started a save file and then I didn't go back for too long, and then I was like, I can never go back. They're on their own now. 2D Firefly says they love Zelda snow outfit. So do I. I'm very excited to make it. I think it's going to be really cute and fun and cozy. I hope it's cozy. Oh, no. No, you falling asleep. Well, thanks for tuning in for at least some of this. Well, I used to paint the epoxy. Probably just some like little acrylic paints, nothing major, nothing super special. Well, this is still super soft. Adding a little bit of water to your to your fingers or to whatever your sculpting tool is will help. Um, things not stick. Oh, here it is. This is my favorite song on this playlist. So I'm just kind of lightly shaping it right now. Um, if I apply too much pressure, it's just going to crush it and it'll collapse. So that's why it's like very slow going. Um, as this starts to harden, it'll get nice and more easy to manipulate. Hello, Jared. Welcome to my room. Hello. How'd your filming go? Good. Good, I'm glad. I got a long way to go today. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Too bad we don't have any beer. Yeah. You want to go get some? No. Damn it. Dang it. <laughs> You ever to hard reset your town? No, all of your poor animals. So it's definitely built up more on one side than it is on the other. Um, it's a little bit more flat on the back. I can keep it that way. I was in, in kind of imagining that it would have like an equal volume, but.
but um, I guess realistically it wouldn't hurt to have it flat on one side because that can be the side that like lays against the bag. Yeah, it's still just so soft that any, if I'm trying to like really put pressure on it to shape it, it just like collapses the shape um, under my hands, so yeah. Does acrylic paint crack or a multi, uh, acrylic paint, okay, um, should be fine for this. This is not a flexible surface. This is a rigid surface. And so, um, acrylic paint is also rigid. You don't want to use it for something that you need to flex unless you have a flexible paint. Um, so it's going to be perfect for my purposes here, which is that it won't crack on a rigid surface. Jared left to everyone who's trying to talk to him. Sorry guys, Jared is gone. False alarm. Jared finished his, his filming and then he came in here shirtless trying to distract me and it didn't work. <laughs> All right, well, I swear to you, by this time tomorrow, this is gonna be like rock hard in whatever shape I put it in. Um, so this was kind of all I had planned for tonight's stream. I have sewing to do, but I'm at like a weird point where it's like hard to see. Um, it's hard to really show visible progress. It's kind of everything's at like a weird in between stage. And so because of that, um, I wanted to just do a quick side project tonight, which was make up this um, mock up for the bag. Someone saying, uh, 2D Firefly says, it's like shaping a wad of gum. That is what it feels like because it's so soft and sticky right now that it's not, it's just like a huge pain in the ass to try to mold it or to try to, to sculpt it rather. So this is what it's looking like. I did get it to be very roughly uh, the size and shape that I want. And again, I just can't, just can't manipulate it too much right now without just collapsing it because uh, it's in that, that gummy, sticky, weird, uh, state still. So I'm just very gently like kind of squeezing it to flatten it out in different areas. So I'm probably going to end the stream. It's only been an hour and a half, which is kind of short for my streams, but, um, you know, this is what I had done ready for tonight. Um, I am going to have to keep fine tuning this sculpt over the next hour to an hour and a half, probably. Um, once this starts hardening up, I'll have a lot more control over really making it nice and smooth um, with my sculpting tools and with some water. But I think I did okay, considering that it's at that like gummy lumpy stage. Um, so this is definitely a good shape to start with. And even if it totally hardened in this shape, I could take some sandpaper to it and really easily turn this into a nice, clean, um, consistent triangle shape. But there it is, that's how this is gonna connect once this is all cured, uh, which means in this case, once it hardens into a, a permanent shape. Um, yeah. Scarlet Moth is like, we didn't get to see the goods because Jared is showing off his sexiness for me. Yep, sorry about that. I am gonna try to go get that beer, or at least I want to. I'll see if I can see Jared. I'm I'm going to if I go get the beer. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my stream tonight. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Now you have seen the beginnings of my bag plus the clasp, um, and hopefully I can turn this into a really nice finished product that will be leather and shiny with piping and all of the rest of the details in the pocket. Everyone's like, go get that beer, so I will. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. My next stream is Saturday afternoon, uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. Um, and hopefully I'll be at a point where we can sew something a little bit more interesting. But that's the plan. I will see you all later. Have a lovely evening, and thanks for coming to my stream. Bye, guys.